Good morning. What a beautiful morning it is, look at this. We're here at Cruz de Condor, waiting for a condor. And I thought while I'm waiting, I might as well tell you some pros and cons of traveling here in Peru. After our few, few mm, First pro, the people. I would say the people are definitely, by far, the pro of Peru. I've spoken to a lot of people here in a, in a few weeks and I've probably only had a couple of unfriendly uh, encounters. Very nice people on the whole. Very safe here as well. It's you, we, We've been walking around at night with our bags and everything, no problem at all. You don't need to worry about that. I know there's a lot of, uh, we were warned a lot before we came here. Oh, South America, are you sure you want to go there? It's dangerous and all this, but nah, don't worry about that. It's fine. It's fine here in Peru anyway. I don't know about the other countries. I, we haven't been there yet. First con is going to be the tours. Everything here is tours. And, and, and the actual tour agencies lie to you and say that you can't get there without a tour to some places. Like here, for example. They were saying, oh no, you need to do a tour with us. There's no such thing as a collective on that, but there is. That's the most annoying thing. It's having to do tours all the time. Especially when you're in somewhere like this. Like, look at it. I want to be following a fucking tour guide around with a load of other tourists. I want to be out enjoying nature, the peace and quiet, and like doing my own thing. But uh, you can you can do it without them. It's just that they do make it very difficult. Like we did the South Cante trek, for example, and mo uh, most of the nice um, accommodations along the way, they're pre-booked for tours. You can't even stay in them, even if you walk in. We walked into a few. No, 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 no. All of all of them, no. It's a pain in the ass. You're stuck with shit accommodations in places like that because the tours just book up all the good ones. So that's definitely the biggest con for this place is, is everything's tours and it's it's not cheap either. Second pro, easily going to be the wildlife. The wildlife here is something else. You've got the second largest bird in the world. You've got the Amazon rainforest. Arguably, the easiest route into the Amazon rainforest is through Peru. You've got bears here, you've got pumas, you've got all sorts of things. If you've got the time to try and find them, there's, there's, yeah, llamas, of course, Natalia, thank you. Llamas and alpacas. There's all sorts of, there's, there's a lot of animals here, right? And it's, and it's, and it's a very nice landscape to uh, see them in. And this probably has got the most abundant wildlife we've seen, maybe apart from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's had a lot, a lot of wildlife as well. So that would be my second pro. Second con to traveling in Peru. I'm gonna say the food, or at least the food hygiene. We've been here for two and a half weeks, and I think for 10 days of that, I've had a dodgy stomach. I just can't shift it. And it all started from eating jelly in a market, which I know is stupid, but that should only have lasted like a day. But it's been every time I've eaten, it's sometimes flaring up, sometimes not. And it's just a pain in the ass. It's ruined a good eight days of my experience. So I'd say, the, and, and the food, if you've been to Southeast Asia as well, you're probably going to feel a bit let down by the food here. The food is, you know, they've got some nice dishes, we've had some nice food, but, but f like the flavours in like the Southeast Asian food compared to this, is just this does not compare. It's quite bland, it's very basic, there's a lot of chips and rice on the same food plate so you're just eating a lot of chips and rice with maybe a bit of meat a bit of alpaca meat or chicken or something like that in like a sauce that's not really that flavorful and the funny thing is when we we said we're coming here everyone's like oh peru's a proper foodie place so such good food <sighs> i don't know about that mate might be the best in south america but <sighs> i wouldn't say it's a foodie place maybe lima lima's meant to have good food in it Oh yeah, ceviche, right? The third pro to travel in here is gonna be diversity the diversity of landscapes. That's exactly what I was gonna say, Natalia. Wow. Yeah, the diversity of landscapes. The rainforests, the mountains, the lakes, the, the snowy areas, the, the canyons, the rivers, there's deserts, there's beaches, there's every single thing. Any type of hike or trek or experience you want to have, Peru will be able to facilitate it. 
it's not like a little poxy desert or a little shitty mountain. It's like, look at it. Look how dramatic that is. It's absolutely stunning. And I, I would say with that as well, the, the weather. The weather is the perfect temperature for doing the hikes and treks and stuff. It's not too hot and humid. It's not raining too much. Like we're here in wet season, it's low season. Even, even in low season with, with the poorer weather, it's still perfect weather to, to walk in and you haven't got to worry about that. The third con kind of ties into one of the others, but I'm going to say the transport types here. You either got to fly or you've got to take at least an eight hour bus ride to get to somewhere. And it's not a bus ride on normal motorways like you'd think. It's, it's, it's mountainous areas for a lot of Peru. And you're going to be sitting on a bus getting thrown around for eight hours and it is knackering. It's a horrible experience. The night buses as well. In fact, the night buses here are probably the best night bus I've ever had uh, in any country I've been to. It was a very comfortable night bus. We paid for the slightly more expensive seat. It cost us about $180 per person for the night. And the flights can actually be quite expensive. So for some, sometimes we've actually had to get a bus because the flights have been so expensive. Like everyone was, before we came was saying, oh, you just get flights over there. They're so cheap domestic flights. No, no, they're not. We, we've been looking at some flights and we've literally, it's been either you spend $250 per person or $300 per person, or you get a bus for $15 each. So uh, you just bear that in mind, especially if you're thinking of taking checked luggage like what we've stupidly done, because that, that pushes the price of your flights up by quite a bit. If, you, if you're right with buses and mountainous roads, yeah, you would be fine. And a fourth point I want to make, not necessarily a pro or a con, because it kind of fits in both, is the money situation here the expense of traveling here. There's pros and cons to it. It can be very expensive here, or you can do it very cheaply. The, the problem here is that there are, there are cheap accommodation options available, but they're not, they're not, it's not an enjoyable experience in our experience. There are more expensive accommodation options available and that you will have a nice experience if you go there. It's not like in Southeast Asia or South Asia or anywhere like that where you can get pick up a place for 20 30 pound a night for two people and it'd be like a banging villa with some nice breakfast and that like it's not like that here if you, if you get a cheap place you get a worse experience whereas if you spend a little bit more like if you spend in at least 50 pound a night 70 pound a night then you will get somewhere that's of the same level as the 20 30 pound a night places in southeast asia i would say food Food out here is you're looking at about eight pounds a meal. Again, it's about double of what Southeast Asia offers. And the meals, as I said, not really on, on the same level at all. Transport, already touched on that. Water, water. Now guys, water bottles here. If you get a one litre bottle of water, you're gonna pay the same as if you get a five litre thing of water. So you can get ripped off with water here easily. So if, you don't, if you're not staying in some place for long enough and you've just got to get the little one litre bottles, you're going to be paying about anywhere between five to eight solids per bottle, which is anywhere from one pound to one pound 80 per bottle of water, which is extortionate. Again, in Asia, well, they're like 30p. If you're going to stay in somewhere for a long time, I would recommend going to find one of the big five litre or seven litre things of water and getting that because they're about they're about nine solids so it's like two quid nearly and they'll obviously last you a lot longer but you don't want to carry it around with you snacks again if you want to get snacks you're gonna get ripped off here you can find some places that do the snacks for the right price but most places absolutely rip you off for snacks it was like one place this geezer wanted three pounds for a packet of crisps three quid i couldn't believe it and then even just normal like little pack of doritos one pound fifty for a pack of doritos insane so you can easily get ripped off out here and you've got you, you just don't know if they're going to try and rip you off or not until you get into the actual spot so you just go you've got to shop around all the time also using cash here everyone wants cash a lot of places are going to try and charge you a commission if you try and use your card as well you can uh, if you say oh don't worry about it then then they have always taken off the commission in our experience 
And if you want to get cash out, the best ATM to use is the Banco de la Nacion. Don't need to pay any fees and you can take out up to 400 soles per day, which is about 80 pound. Free of charge. Get your own money for free. What a fucking luxury. Anyway, do with that information what you will. And don't forget to have fun. Even if you have a dodgy stomach from all the food. Peace out.